Okay, so I make it nine o'clock, so I'm going to make a start. Um, anything, if any other students join, I can do a quick recap. Um, mine, like I said, mine will take no longer than about five minutes, and then I'll pass over to Andrea and Natalie, um, the tutors who are going to give you the information on the course. So, first of all, thank you for joining our virtual open event. Obviously, we would much prefer to welcome you into college, um, show you the facilities, get you to meet all of the staff. Um, but hopefully, this is um, the next best thing, and you can still get all of the information that you will get at a at a a proper open event. So I'm just going to share my screen with a short presentation and um, hopefully you can all see that on the screen now. Um, so first of all, um, the presentation is um, in the St. Helens brand, but obviously um, we've got students on today that have applied from Nosley and St. Helens. So all of the information is the same. And um, the reason it's the St. Helens brand is just because that's, that's, the, fair, that's the presentation that I've been using um, for all of my other events for St. Helens. But the information is exactly the same across Nosley and St. Helens, just different social media pages, which I will share with you at the end. So first of all, welcome to Nosley and St. Helens College and thank you for considering us for your studies for next year. Um, hopefully this session will give you all of the information that you need to progress into your um, college studies next year. So applications are still open. As you can see, we've got the St. Helens link up on, um, on your screen at the moment. Nosley um, is just nosleycollege.ac.uk forward slash apply. So exactly the same as St. Helens. So if you, if you are um, hoping to apply for Nosley, you'll just need the Nosley um, site. So applications are still open for both colleges. Um, we would recommend that you apply sooner rather than later so you can secure your place and we can get your interviews and everything done with you. Um, but we are still open, so if you need to hear more information and you've not yet applied, now is the time to do so. Um, we offer a range of courses across our Nosley and St. Helens campuses. So not everything that you see on the list at the moment is offered at Nosley, but the majority are, um, and business is one of them. So that's what you're, you're here for today. So apprenticeships. So although you can study um, business as a full-time course, there is also apprenticeships, which I'm sure Andrea and Natalie will probably touch upon. Um, but it's like business administration where you're in an office base, um, an office setting. So 30 hours is minimum for an apprenticeship per week. And how it usually works is there's four days a week where you're in the workplace one day a week where you go to college to um, gain your qualification. Um, the difference is you earn a wage. Um, so although you've got your, your um, qualification at the end of it, you've also got obviously a lot of work experience, hopefully a really good reference, um, and you've earned money whilst you've been studying too. If you are interested in apprenticeships, you can download a copy of our apprenticeship guide. So I've just, the link is on there for St. Helens. Um, but that guide is the same. As you can see, it's got the St. Helens and the Nosley logo on. That's because the information is the same for both um, colleges. So that guide is exactly the same for Nosley and St. Helens. Um, similar to the job shop. So the first link is a link to the, the apprenticeship guide where you'll see information generally on apprenticeships. The second link is a link to our job shop where we list all of our current vacancies. So if you are interested in an apprenticeship, I'm not quite sure if there's any vacancies on there at the moment, um, but that's where they would be listed if we did have any with our um, employers that we link in with. So if you are interested in apprenticeships, there are the links for you to be looking at. Um, so as a student at St. Helens College, there's some benefits for you. So free breakfast is one of them. If you're in on time, so before quarter to nine, you're entitled to a free breakfast to set you up for the day. Um, all of our students are also entitled to free travel. So you, we have a free college bus that covers Wigan, St. Helens, Nosley. But we also have um, a free Arriva bus pass for those students that aren't, aren't on the free college bus route. So you'll always have a way of travelling to college. We also offer a free Microsoft Office 365 package. <clears throat> so that's for you to download at home on your own computers and laptops, um, which will obviously help you a lot with your coursework and that sort of thing. Um, and you'll also get student discounts. So in places like the cinema, restaurants, clothes shops, um, you'll be entitled to student discounts as a student. 
bursaries, free college lunch and assistance to buy course equipment and uniforms. They're all done off um, a financial assessment. So at enrolment stage, um, you will you will have that assessment um, to see whether you are entitled to those things. But that just covers things like um, any equipment for your course, um, if, you're, if your course has a uniform, that sort of thing. Um, so not everybody is entitled to those things, but um, that will be assessed at enrolment stage. So at college, we have an excellent safeguarding and wellbeing team, and they work across all of our campuses, so Nosley and St. Helens. Um, they are a fantastic team that are there to support our students and our staff. Um, so if you've got any problems, whether it's something personal, something that's happening in college, something that you're stressed about, anything where you feel like you could, you need a little bit of support and you want to speak to somebody, that's what our safeguarding and wellbeing team are there for. Um, so they offer some fantastic support um, and that's there for you to use anytime whilst you're a student with us in college. Um, we also have a learner support team. So if you have any additional learning needs, whether that's something like dyslexia or anything along those lines where you might need some extra support in class, um, you might need support with exams or extra time or anything like that, we can get that put in place too. But you do just have to be honest with us at a moment stage. Finally, um, our social media accounts. So what you can see there is the St. Helens accounts. Nosley is just Nosley College. Um, so Facebook, um, Instagram, all of those pages, um, you can search for Nosley as well. Um, we put up to date information out on our social media and we also put success stories on. So we follow um, stories of previous students. So you might wanna go on there and have a little look, find a little bit of inspiration from what our past students are up to now. And then finally, our admissions email. So that's the same across St. Helens and Nosley. It's the same admissions team that mm -hmm. looks for that. Um, so admissions um, are there for any support. So if you've got any issues with your application, you might have applied for a course and you've changed your mind and you want to swap it to something else, um, you can contact our admissions team and they will sort that for you. Um, at the moment, our, all of our staff are currently contacting our students that have applied to study with us next year or telephone interviews. So if you've not yet been into college for an interview before, um, we, we have to close down for the coronavirus, um, or you've not yet had your telephone interview, you will be contacted shortly, um, so in the next week or so. If you don't hear from us soon, please get in touch with us at admissions at stellens.ac.uk because it could be that we've got the wrong contact details for you on the system. Um, and that, that's why you've not been contacted. So if you've not been, if no one's been in touch with you, say by Friday the 10th, um, this Friday, please contact the admissions and we can do that for you. Okay, so I'm gonna pass over now um, to Andrea and Natalie, um, and they will be able to um, tell you all about the course. Like I said, any questions, please use the chat over to me and I can direct them over once they've finished um, presenting or chatting to you. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks Bethan. I'll just share my screen. I'm Andrea, one of the business tutors, and I'm going to talk to you about um, a couple of the options for business courses. So I'm just going to share my screen so we can talk about the um, programmes that we've got on offer. That's it. Okay, so starting in September 2020, we've got three different options that you could study in the business sixth form department. I'm going to talk to you about the first two, which is NCFE level two and three for skills for business. And then I'm going to hand over to Natalie to talk to you about the BTEC option for business this year. And um, the level two programme that we run for skills for business is a one year course and it is equivalent to GCSE. So it's a similar uh, level for those of you studying GCSE in school at the moment as what you're studying now. In order to get into the level two skills for business programme, you need to have four GCSEs at grade three or above, including your English or maths. You don't have to have studied business before, but you do need to have an interview. Um, if you're predicted higher grades than that, just hang on for a bit because the level three options that we're gonna talk about in a minute will probably be more suitable for yourself. The reason why we interview everybody um, for business is partly to find out if you're right for our course, but also to see if the course is right for you. 
So we do um, talk quite a lot in the interview about what you're expecting from business because there's quite a lot of theory in any of our business courses, even the ones with practical elements include quite a bit of theory and there's a fair bit of assignment writing needed. So we chat about in the interview about that to make sure that you're happy with, with the course that you're choosing and that it suits you. Um, we also talk about things like, are you okay with traveling to college and getting here on time? What kind of future plans do you have? What are your ambitions? Just to make sure that, that this course will fit in with what you've chosen for the future. So that's why interview is quite an important part of the process. And as Beth has said, we'll do those over the phone at the moment. Okay, when you come on a course for business with us, um, either at St Helens or Nosley, you will be expected to complete more than just your basic business classes. Um, and this slide just gives you an overview of the different parts of a study programme um, at college. So as well as your main course of study in business, you will be expected to continue studying English and maths in order to get up to your grade four. If you've already got a grade four in one of them, you just attend the one that you need in order to get your, your grades both to grade four. Um, so we'll place you in English and math classes at the start of the year. And once that is decided and agreed, you need to attend all those classes as well as attending your business classes. In total, the whole full study programme is timetabled over about three to four days. So you still get um, some time in the week to either do assignment work or find a part-time job and gain experience. Um, that's the next part of the slide is all about work experience. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more when I get to the level three course option, uh, but it is a requirement of all the study programmes for business that you complete that during the year. Another requirement is that you attend tutorials, the last part of that slide. Um, you have a personal tutor allocated to you throughout the year. You'll have a lesson with them um, every week. And in that lesson, you'll talk about things like targets and progress and your aspirational grades, what you want to achieve, but also any individual requirements you might have, any individual needs, you can talk to your personal tutor. But you need to attend all parts of that study programme um, at college. Okay, a little bit more detail of the business units themselves, the actual subjects you'll be studying. In level two business, the six main units, which are shown on your screen at the moment, and all of these are assessed with a mixture of some written assignments and some practical tasks. Um, you'll get a good grounding in skills for working in a business environment but you'll also get a good idea of the, some of the theories in business to lead you on to level three, if that's your chosen route. The grades available in this qualification are past merit or distinction. And if you want to progress onto higher study in business, you do need to achieve either a merit or a distinction grade. All your work during the year that you do for these units, where you're guided with different individual tutors, will be stored in a, what's called a portfolio of evidence. So a file that presents your work nicely for our external verifier at the end of the year. So you, when you're doing an assignment, you need to not only think of the content, but also that it looks professional, that it's to a business standard, and that we can print that to go in your portfolio and present a good um, example of your work to hand in. Okay, progression from level two, the natural progression from level two really would be onto the level three NCFE in skills for business enterprise. Or if you're thinking of university in the future, you may think of going on to the BTEC level three. You'd have to assess that with your personal tutor and your course tutors to see which was the right option for you. So you choose one or the other depending on your future ambitions. At the end of the one year programme, you can, if you want to go straight into an apprenticeship or straight into employment, um, and you will have developed skills to help you get onto those as well. And again, your personal tutor will guide you through that towards the end of your first year of study with us. So we're gonna carry on now and talk a little bit about the level three option, which is a very similar structure, but there's just a few little differences in the content. 
So the level three programme is a diploma in skills for business enterprise. So there's a focus there with the enterprise on um, a little bit of starting your own business and some elements that link to that. This is also a one year programme and this is at level three. So it's equivalent to a level study. The UCAS points that you'll earn at the end of the year from a level three programme are equivalent to one and a half A levels. Um, again, entry requirement is subject to interview and I've explained why that's so important already. You don't have to have studied business before. If you have, it helps you with a bit of background to some of the theory. So either way is okay. The grades you need to get onto level three are five GCSEs at grade four or above, including English or maths. Again, your programme is part of a full study programme, so not just your business units, but also other elements that might be relevant for you to develop and gain the right skills and qualifications you need to progress in the future. So English and maths are still an option here at level three, but the aim is that you would, if you want to, upgrade your grade fours to grade fives. If you have a particular career ambition and a particular university that you want to attend, it could be that a five is essential for you. You'll have the choice at the start of the year whether you want to upgrade your fours to fives. Once you've made that choice, you have to attend the lessons for English or Maths each week so that you've given yourself a really good opportunity of getting that five if that's what you want to achieve. Work experience, I'll talk about a little bit more in detail at this stage. For all the study programmes that you do with business, you need to complete work experience. This is really good for enhancing your skills for the future, for helping you with your study and writing assignments, because you'll have practical examples you can draw on, and also to enhance your CV for the future. If you're applying for jobs, if you can show some good work experience, it'll help you have an advantage in an interview situation. You are expected to find your own work experience placement, but I will speak to each group at the start of the year and I'll give you some guidance on that process and how you might go about starting to find your own placement. It could be that that placement is a part time job that you could also get paid for, which would be great if you can achieve that. Um, I will speak to you a little bit more about it, but you'll you'll have to have some recording of your hours that you've done with that employer that is confirmed by the employer for our records. All I'll say at this stage is the more thought and effort you put in to finding your work experience, the more you'll get out of it because it can be a really useful um, part of the study program. Um, so we, we'll chat about that a little bit more on induction, but it is an essential part of what you do. And also, again, your personal tutor support is also essential. We'll have a look at attendance, punctuality, progress, lots of career choices. And again, you'll have access if you want to talk about your personal tutor, about any individual needs, you can chat to them each week. OK, the individual units of study at level three are shown on the screen now. There are nine units of study. Some of these might be subject to change because we're just having a little look at some of them um, and the tutors will be guiding them. And so there might be some slight changes. The main units, though, do run every year. Um, again, in each unit, there's a mixture of written assignments looking at the theory and practical tasks where you're expected to um, work in projects and produce some, some business work yourself. Again, it's past merit and distinction. Um, and the UCAS points that you receive depend on that grade. So it, you get more UCAS points the higher the grade you get. So if you can get an overall distinction, you get more UCAS points for the future. Again, the evidence is presented in a portfolio, um, which is a file that presents your work to be handed in at the end of the year. So any assignment or practical tasks you're doing, there will need to be printed evidence of that that's a professional business standard that shows a good representation of your work during the year. Okay, just a little example then of, of some of the work that students have done last year. Um, one of the practical tasks we did last year was um, contributing to running a project in Unit 7. 
and all the students were asked to work in small groups to produce um, a video advert advertising a new product. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Dragon's Den or um, The Apprentice on television. It's a little bit like one of The Apprentice tasks. If you see any of that on iPlayer, it's quite good to have a little look and, and see what they do. But our students um, came up with a few good ideas. We've got an example here where one group decided that Arriva should have some new disco buses to come to college and back that, that look very, uh, very exciting. Um, and another group looked at some new style phone cases where there were special grip features. And each group um, designed their own idea, made their own video to advertise that idea. And as well as doing those practical and creative tasks, they also had to um, write, write up a plan of what they were going to do, a control of how they were checking they were on track, and also an evaluation afterwards of how that project went all important parts of business theory and business practice. So that just gives you a little example of the type of work you might do. Progression from the NCFE level three would really naturally take you into apprenticeship or employment because it does cover a lot of those in underpinning skills that you need for the workplace for business. You can go on to further study at level three in a variety of different subjects, or if you're old enough, you've already done some study somewhere else, um, then you could go straight into higher education at University Centre St Helens, which is onto HNC, HND courses. And ultimately you can actually go right up to a BA degree at St Helens in business. So one of the courses where you go all the way from level two right through to full degree level, if that's what you choose. The important point really at the end of your, your level three year in NCFE would be that you've got options and choices of what you want to do next and how you want to progress. And that will very much depend on what your career ambitions are and what you want to do in the future. So that's given you just a little flavour of NCFE level two and NCFE level three. I'm going to hand over now to Natalie so that she can talk you through the final option. Morning, everyone. Is that screen sharing? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, so thanks, Andrea. A lot of the things I'm going to cover um, are similar to what Andrea's already told you, so I'll probably skip over some of it. In fact, for, for example, the study programme and the elements that make up a study programme. Um, so the course I'm going to talk about is another level three qualification, but this is a BTEC level three foundation diploma in business. Again, it's a one year programme and is equivalent to A-level standard um, and worth one and a half A-levels um, or equivalent. Okay, so the entry criteria here is the main thing that makes this different to the NCFE level three. Um, to gain a place on this course, you need to have achieved four GCSEs at grade five or above, and that must include English and maths. As Andrea's already explained, this is subject to interview, um, and the importance of that has been explained by Andrea as well. Again, you don't have to have studied business before, because all the units that we've selected cover the basics right from the start, and I'll talk about those um, a little bit later on. What we do expect, though, is that in preparation for studying business, um, that you try and keep yourselves up to date with what's going on in the business world. So that might be reading, listening to or watching the news and just building up a little bit of knowledge about the economy and some well reported businesses. OK. Um, I'll talk about the units in a second, but there are um, some elements that are internally assessed through coursework and some that are exams. So again, that's one of the key differences between the BTEC level three and the NCFE in that we do have a couple of exams um, on the BTEC. Um, there is also opportunities to upgrade your English and maths, as Andrea's already discussed, and the uh, personal tutor Andrea's already discussed. So I won't, I won't go over that again. 
Okay, so these are your units of study. Um, the first four at the top are the internally assessed coursework units. So we start with exploring business and this gives you an insight into the different structures that business can take, um, the legal entities, the size of businesses, um, the different types of businesses. So it gives you the, the base knowledge of business. Um, unit four, managing events, is a little bit more practical in terms of you get involved in an actual event, um, usually within the college, and have some element of management over that, working usually as a team. Recruitment and selection, um, really important. It's a people side, of the, uh, it's a people unit, but it's very much about um, hiring, firing, training, making sure that you've got the right people, you can keep them motivated and keep... Um, keep your staff loyal. And then the final coursework assessed unit is pitching for a new business. So similarly to what Andrea talked about with the NCFE, this is about actually putting your, your knowledge of business uh, into practice and coming up with some creative business ideas and pitch, pitching those. So telling people, you know, what are the benefits of it? What product ideas have you got? And so on and so forth. Moving on to the other two units, these are the externally assessed units. So these are examined units. Um, the first one being the marketing unit. So this is about getting your business out there, um, advertising it, what sort of promotion are you gonna do? Uh, how are you gonna get people to, to choose you over a competitor? Um, and then you've got the finance unit. Now, people are often put off by uh, business when they think about finance, but you know, it's basic maths. It's quite important that we understand um, how a business makes money, what profit levels that they've made, um, how they calculate those profit levels and understand the costs associated with running a business. So as you can see, um, all of the units that we, we cover uh, give you a broad knowledge of all of the business areas um, and an understanding of business from various different aspects. Okay, so progression routes are very similar um, to other options. However, the natural progression here is to HNC or HND business management or a foundation degree or degree. So a key difference between NCFE and BTEC is students who generally want to go to university and do some um, higher education study will, will usually opt for the BTEC route. Um, however, you could still use it to go into employment. Um, okay, so he's, these are just some pictures, some examples of student work that's been done in the past. Um, the, this is where students took part in an event at the college. They did set up one desk where they asked people to taste branded and supermarkets own brand drinks and allowed them a discussion on branding and pricing strategies. Um, there was loads of other little practical things that they had um, the, the customers, if you like, doing. It basically just shows how our understanding of business topics can actually be applied in the real world. And it's a fun way of looking at how branding works. Um, so just an example of some of the, the, the sort of practical work that students have done on the course. Um, you will see on this slide that there are email addresses for both myself Andrea and Alana, who's the other tutor um, on the NCFE and BTEC courses. So if you do think of any questions after this presentation and you want to direct them to us, there's our emails on there. Um, alternatively, you've got the chat op option now. So if you want to type any questions, feel free to do that now and um, we'll answer them at the end. And then finally, this has already been shared with you by Bethan, but just to show you that obviously you can follow us on social media and you can see regular updates. Um, many thanks for your time and for your interest in the department. If you've got any questions, feel free to type them now. Thank you. Right, we have had a question, Natalie. So it's from Mia and she's just put in to say, does this course cover accounting? Which course? Sorry, Mia, which course? Um, I'll see. I'll wait for her to type in. 
So is it the course that um, Natalie was talking about, uh, talked you through or the course that Andrea covered? I think generically I can answer the question anyway, to be honest. Um, it's not an accounting course as such. The college does offer accounting courses, um, the AAT courses. We always cover a finance unit. So every one of the courses covers a finance unit. So there is an element of an introduction to finance and accounting, um, but it's very basic accounting. If you were looking to go into an accounting route, you, you might want to have a look at the AAT stuff and the accounting courses that are specifically just accounting. So these are business courses that cover an element of accounting. Does that answer the question, Mia? I think that does. So with, with accountant, we only offer accountant for adults. So if you're over um, 19, but we do offer it as an apprenticeship route. So if accountant is what you were interested in, um, specifically, you could look for an employer um, and look at the apprenticeship route. Um, so if that's if that was the course that if that's exactly what you want them to do, that's that's a route, that's an option for you. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Um, any other questions at all? Nothing coming in at the moment. Um, it was quite thorough though, because you've, you've, especially because you've both been on as well. So you've both um, covered both those courses really well. Um, so I would imagine that um, there's no questions coming in because you've covered everything. Um, <laughs> so Natalie has, has shared um, Natalie's, Alana's and Andrea's emails with you all and um, so if you've got any questions or later on you think think of something that you should you, you wish you'd have asked and um, you can get in touch with us. I'll also pop in the chat the admissions email that I showed you earlier on. If you've got any questions on your application or if you've um, if you're not contacted for a phone interview please get in touch with us. Like I say it could be that um, we've got your details wrong on the system a typo when you've applied or something like that. Um, after this session, you will get an email um, for thanking you for joining, but also there'll be contact details in there too. So if you've not, um, if you if you don't hear from us or there's something that you think later on you wish you'd have, you'd have asked us, please do get in touch with us and we'll help you as best as we can. Um, so thank you for joining our virtual open event and hopefully you found it really useful and got all the information um, that, you, that you required today. Um, all that's left for us to say really is thank you. Good luck with your GCSE results and we look forward to welcoming you hopefully um, with us in September. Okay, thanks everyone.